that is so magnificent is because we have confidence. We have an understanding and confidence. It's not a blind faith. It's a real confidence understanding of how freedom works. And, uh, and if we do resort to this, this program, uh, it is the most compassionate of all programs. Because if we care about our fellow man, and most people do, and that's what motivates the liberal, do-good, welfare socialist, is we have to take care of people. And people won't take care of themselves. They, they degrade people by insulting them, by saying they won't take care of themselves, and government has to fill in. But they don't understand that in doing so, they destroy the productivity of the country. So when you undermine the monetary system, run up these debts, and all our good jobs go overseas, we really can't afford what we're doing. And it is the confidence that we know that freedom truly does work, that then those individuals that promote liberty are the ultimate compassion people, because if you're compassionate and say we're going to do it, and you destroy the middle class, which is what's happening today. The middle class is being wiped out. In the old days, you know, one person could work and take care of their family. Now, two people have to work. And the standard of living is not going up. It's, it's uh, holding steady or going down for a certain class of people. And the worst part about what's going on today is there's a transfer of wealth. It is transferred from middle class to the wealthy. And in history, this has always led to political turmoil. That's what I want to prevent. There's no need for that uh, whatsoever. So there's a few things that we should do. I mean, we should move away from dependency on the government, and we certainly need a new foreign policy. We need to bring our troops home and end that war Amen. in Iraq. Some people would claim that uh, under those conditions that mean you're not uh, American enough, you're not pro-troop enough, and all those ac accusations about what happened. Then they'll say, oh, well, you want to support the terrorists, and all those stories which, is just, which they are just false. If you truly want a strong national defense, we'll have a different foreign policy because really our defenses are down more than ever. But the whole principle of going overseas and meddling, like taking our border guards and putting them in Iraq, what sense does that make? You know, we spend so much money blowing up bridges in Iraq, then we have to pay to rebuild them. At the same time, our bridges are falling down here at home. So it doesn't take a lot of common sense to say, with a different foreign policy, not only could we save a lot of money and bring personnel home, we literally could spend money more productively here. Uh, we could address the subject of our infrastructure, and we don't have to put people out on the street. The people who have become dependent on government programs, which they shouldn't have, there's no reason why you have to close down shop. But we ought to worry about the next generation. If they're ready and eager to accept the responsibility of a free society, they have to understand that they ought to be able to get out of the Social Security dependency on government, but they ought to have the opportunity to take care of themselves. And to me, this, this is a solution that can be worked out economically and certainly would be worked out, out in the context of the Constitution. And I, I think it's, the, uh, it's almost sad that over these many years that so many of us have been involved, that we haven't delivered this message well enough to be, be received because Washington doesn't share this message like they should. But the, the convincing evidence is what's happening here in the last six months. There, there are enough people out there that will and want to make a difference. And uh, it, it astounds me at times because I've been sort of on the pessimistic side saying, no, it's going to take a lot longer. I know there are people out there, but I thought they were few in numbers. I did not know how the young people would respond. And uh, yes, we, we don't have as much money as the others. But believe me, we spend our money much more wisely than they do. <laughs> I, somebody asked me early in the campaign, how are you going to compete about those guys with how these tens of millions of dollars? I said, well, who knows? They may end up spending their money and running their uh, campaigns like they run government. <laughs> and lo and behold, I think that has happened because uh, uh, very few of them have as much money as we do in, in the bank. And uh, somebody said, uh, you know, Pat Buchanan made a comment. He's a friend of mine. He said uh, on TV, he says, yeah, that was when the message came out that we had as much money in the bank as some others or more than some others. And he says, you know that Ron Paul doesn't like to spend money. If he'd have collected $21 million, he'd probably still have $20 million. <laughs> <laughs> but the magnificent, you know, we always talk about the negative unintended consequences of economic and foreign policy. Things come back to haunt us. 
But, you know, to me, this was a, a, a very beneficial, unintended consequence because we didn't say to ourselves, well, we're going to live off the money we collected in the first quarter, do our best in the second quarter, and keep it in the bank to have this, uh, you know, grand opportunity to get some good PR. But it just happened. That's the way it was worked. We were being very, very careful. We had exactly the same amount of money we collected, and it was still in the bank. So what did we do? We got this grand, uh, you know, public relations uh, ability because we were all over the news because we had this money in the bank, and it got us a lot of attention. So here it was. If we'd have spent the money on PR, we wouldn't have had the money and very little attention for those couple million dollars. But here we had the money in the bank and got more publicity than anybody. It was probably worth $20 million worth of publicity. And so we don't... So there is, there is no... There's no doubt I'm, I'm frugal and I am conservative when it comes to spending. My own money and the taxpayers' money, but I am also very, very careful I, how I spend uh, the donors' money. But we will be spending and we will be campaigning hard and we have spent some money this week. More money than before. Somebody asked me today about, well, why aren't you in Iowa? I said, I'll tell you what. I've been in, more, in one spot longer than any place else this particular week. I mean, we've been here all week, so we invested time and energy. My wife's been with me this whole week. We're going to be here through uh, Saturday. And just as I demonstrated in the last day or two or three, we see people changing their minds. I understand the papers today, they reported at least a third of those who are registered Republicans have not made up their mind yet. So a lot can happen in the next few days. And uh, th this is something, you know, it's politics, which is something that some, uh, many of us, uh, you know, get a little bit nervous with. But the politics demonstrates organization. It depends the strength of the message. In our case, I think 99% of what we do and the support we get demonstrates the strength of the message. I see my limitations. I know my shortcomings. But I am 110% convinced that our message is correct. Our message is absolutely right. <laughs> It shouldn't be strange to anybody in this country that loves America, and it shouldn't be strange to any Republican, although they claim that I am not a good Republican. The whole story is that what I talk about and what you support and you've worked for is very Republican. I had a gentleman come up to me today on the street, and he says, boy, I love what you talk about old Senator Robert Taft. He says he was Mr. Republican. He liked sound money. He didn't like foreign intervention. He liked personal liberty. He liked to love the Constitution. He says it just aggravates him to no end when they claim that I'm not a good Republican. But here we are. We have Republican candidates who support abortion and foreign intervention and entitlement programs. Sometimes they almost sound like Democrats to me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, even Jan this morning on the, on the radio, Michelson, you know, was kidding a little bit about, well, they say that you're a liberal and that you belong to the Democrat Party. You're not really a good conservative. The easy answer there is how can uh, those of us who support these positions not be con conservative? I have voted for the least amount of spending and the least amount of taxes of anybody in the Congress, and they want to call me a liberal Democrat. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. But, but anyway, the, the campaign's been very exciting. It's exciting to come and visit with you and see so many ready to get to work and be, uh, you know, really active here in these next few days and thereafter. But uh, I come uh, thanking you not only for the, the help and the volunteering, but also for the support that you give me and my family. My family has been very, very supportive, and they at times have uh, actually increased, uh, uh, you know, are actually more supportive than sometimes when I get tired and I moan and I complain, you know, and they say, no, you need to do it. So, but when I meet with you and you realize it, <clears throat> and it's very, I'm very honest, I feel so much that I've joined your campaign. Uh, not so much that, you know, I am a, I'm a very important person, I have a lot of money, and I want to be your president, that sort of thing. I, I join you because I know what you're anxious to have. And, uh, and I've made it very, very clear that uh, the goals that we have, and I as, as a president, would be quite different than what others advocate. Instead of claiming how, how great we are and what we can do, a good president, in my estimation, will talk about what he doesn't want to do. A good president tells, them, tells the people, I don't want to run your life. I don't want to run the economy, and I don't want to run the world. 
What I want to do is work hard for your freedoms to allow you to run your own lives because that's the best way to do it. I don't have the intelligence, no individuals have the intelligence to know what is best for you. We don't have the moral authority to do it. We don't have the constitutional authority to do it. The whole purpose of the Constitution was designed to restrain the government, not to restrain the people. And here we now have a government dedicated to protecting the privacy of everything the government does and disregarding your personal privacy. They, can, they protect the secrecy of government, disregarding the privacy of the individual. So it is those kind of things that I think are so important, and I believe that the American people, if they hear this, uh, this message, they will be quite willing to support us. I uh, thank you very much for coming out and for your support. Thank you. So up